Good morning, Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. Happy Columbus Day to you. Proof of proof of life. Some sports stuff on the cover of the Daily News. Not really sure what else it is. Something focusing. Well, anyway, so um, today is October 9th, 2017. I'm going to talk about um, again the Department of Sanitation. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on. This is Conti versus DSNY. I know there's a lot of very, uh, very specific stuff that is not, you know, designed for the general public to digest. But it really is because it's all connected in um, in, in, in a lot of ways. So right now we're going to look at um, the uh, discrimination part of this case, and I urge you to uh, read the brief down below. Um, the case now moves to the appellate division, uh, first appellate division, 27 Madison Avenue in New York. And um, I want to I want to look at um, the cases now. The idea of this appeal is to overturn a decision from the uh, New York State Division of Human Rights. New York State Division of Human Rights. They are in New York the agency, the government agency, state level government agency that's designed and put in place to to defend people from illegal discrimination. It's Article 15 of the Human Rights Law. That's what they basically um, that's what they basically uh, do. So let's look at a few people. First we have, uh, so who is the Department of Senate? Who is the uh, New York State Division of Human Rights? We have this person right here, oh yeah, uh, Helen Diane Foster. Now she is the commissioner of the New York State Division of Human Rights, and New York State Div Division of Human Rights is where you go to for an expedited uh, review of, you know, a case of discrimination. Say in in my case you're uh, discriminated against in the workplace so you reach out before you go to the courts you reach out to the they actually are a court New York State Division of Human Rights is a court right it's it's empowered by Cuomo and the government and you reach out and then you you start up a, a proceeding so so let's find out more about um, who Helen Foster is hello I'm Helen Diane Foster Acting Commissioner of the New York State Division of Human Rights. Together, we can ensure our state remains a leader in the fight for equality and social justice. Thank you. Okay, so now that we know basically who Helen Foster is, um, right, she's the Commissioner of New York State Division of Human Rights. And let's see if she practices what she preaches. Does she really believe in, you know, equality and justice and equal justice and all the things that that uh, Division of Human Rights is supposed to stand for? Well, let's see. Here's her at a um, at a gathering with um, her employees. This is this is the mix of the people that she employed. Um, okay, so let me see. You see a lot of uh, smiling faces. People seem to be pretty happy, right? But I don't see any diversity to you. I see all, you know, I see, you know, I see some men, I see some women, but I see mostly black men and black women. So what's that all about? Here's another shot. This is um, actually the director of the regional director for Brooklyn, the guy in the center there, Mr. Uh, William Lamott. Mr. William Lamott, surrounded by seems like Latino women, uh, an Asian woman. Mr. Lamont appears, I guess, at skin tone. He's a black male. Yeah. Right. So let's look at... Um, let, let's see. So so it seems that, you know, equality in, in the workplace is something that we'd all definitely, you know, want to see. And we'd certainly want the, the Division of Human Rights to work on our behalf to make that happen. So let's see... Let's see um, the uh, the good director, uh, Miss Foster, in action. This is her in court, and she's uh, arguing for. Let's find out. 
with the rules. It's not with McSweeney. It's with the process by which we've arrived and thought this was okay. And this is about a seat and an appointment that it should have gone to a person of color. And for all of us, whatever the legislature may or may not do, this is an election year. And I so you, you heard her say that, um, that this position should go to someone, people of, someone of, uh, a person of color. Not, not, we didn't hear her say the best person should, for the job, best person, most qualified person should get the job. The person based on the merits of their, their uh, experience should get the job. No, she said, you know, a person of, uh, a person of color should get this job, whatever the job is, whatever she was arguing for, who the hell knows? Who even cares? The point is that her view in this case is, uh, is, um, is certainly one of, uh, of color. Right, so let's look at the next case. What else we got here? Okay, here's this is a good one. This is her. This is um, uh, Helen Diane Foster when she was the New York City Councilman of the 16th District. And let's see, let's see what she has to say here. Maybe she, maybe that was just an isolated case where she said, you know, that uh, people of color have uh, precedence over everybody else. So let's see what she has to say here. What has diversity done to help answer the concerns of, civil rights, of the civil rights movement? I think, first of all, in the question, we're making a basic assumption that there is diversity. I think that it's superficial in terms of diversity. Real diversity and true diversity can be seen when at the top echelons of business, not everyone sitting around the table are white men. And currently, that's still what you see. So I think we have a long way to go. <gasps> did she say white men? Did she say, did she say that, that diversity, <laughs> that, that there can only be diversity when there's no white men uh, in boardrooms across the country? See, here's the, here's the problem. Here's the problem that we face. These organizations are run by people who have a, a racial view of the world. Their, their view of the world, all of the reasons that we can come up with, right, are, are racial. They're not, the, see, the real problem, the real problem that we're having in this country is not a racial problem. It's an economic problem. The problems that we see stem from economic, you know, income inequality, right? And those are the things that aggravate social injustice, okay? Because if you put everyone, if you put 99% of the people in a pot, you know, full of water and you stop boiling it, people start to try to climb their way out of it. So what, what Helen Diane Foster is basically doing is she's saying that because 1% of the United States, 1% of the population controls 99% of the wealth, she chooses to, dis to, to, to um, implicate the whole rest of the white race <laughs> in America, right? So all of these white folks, right, are guilty because there's a 1% uh, of the population controlling the economic apparatus. Right? They control the you know, stock market. The answers lie in the stock market. Right? We've always known that. But so, but what we're, what we're forced to do is we're forced to listen to Helen Diane Foster when there's actual discrimination occurring. We have to listen to Di Diane Foster, who only sees the world in terms of, of, of black and white. Now, what? How did she? How did she learn that? How, I mean, where did that come from? She probably went to a good school and a good, you know, good place uh, of education to learn about the world and about the American politics. And and uh, okay, so what school did she go to? <gasps> she went to Howard University. Howard University. Howard University is a all black, <laughs> African American people of color, black African American people of color school. It's in uh, Washington D.C. And uh, that's where uh, Miss Foster got her education. So she spent four years in an uh, all-black university. Uh, what else do we have here? And okay, so that brings us uh, to um, to New York politics. Now it's all it's all in, it's all connected. So she, the 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 
commissioner of New York State, and I'm a, again, if you haven't noticed, I'm a white male, right? I'm a white, I'm a white male, so I'm trying to present a case for discrimination in a workplace that was 85 percent African American, people of color, Hispanic non-white people and 100% of my supervisors were 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 the same okay we're, we're actually black black and Hispanic okay so so here I am the white male in this person's view I couldn't possibly be discriminated against I'm the I'm the cause I'm the cause because of the, the color of my skin see white because I'm white in in the eyes of this individual I'm guilty Helen Diane Foster Helen Diane Foster, please reach out to me. My phone number is on the documents down below. Give me a call. Let's talk about this. This is this is outrageous. Okay, so it, then it, it stems into, let's go into uh, New York politics. Who's running the show? Here's Mayor de Blasio. And is he just kissing the first random person next to him <laughs> because he feels like it? No, that's his wife. And she is a obviously black african-american person of color and there are two very very you know cool and 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 you know fashionable and and good-looking children right right next to them right no problem there hey listen you know what i'm again again because i'm commenting on race and i i happen to be white that does not make me a racist it, i'm pointing out statistics statistical facts and people's world view right i'm presenting a case my a case of discrimination to people who 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 see things differently they see the problems that we're having as racially motivated black versus white where the problem is is economics it's economics it's it's too many people too few people control too much of the wealth and those people use race as a kind of a, 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 a an instrument of war, if you will. So, so here's the good mayor de Blasio and his lovely family. Were, okay. Oh, look, Mayor de Blasio. Now, here's Mayor de Blasio in the New York Post. I believe the uh, date says July 11, 2016. Here's Mayor de Blasio and his his lovely wife. Uh, her name. Charlene McRae, well now Charlene de Blasio, and um, so what are they talking about here? They, you know, here's Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement, the Black Lives Matter movement. Mayor de Blasio and his wife defend Black Lives Matter movement, right? So they're they're you know, hurrah, black, black issues, black issues. Wife is black, children are half black. Blasio is uh, favoring black people, right? So. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. But what? Well, let's look at Black Lives Matter. What the hell's Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter. Here's 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 the latest. Um, you know, and again, my 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 um, case again is is about a supervisor. One particular part of the case is a supervisor. His, his my direct supervisor. His name is uh, Mr. Dunphy. He's from Ghana, Africa, and he said white people in this country have good jobs. You must have done something. You wouldn't be here if you weren't desperate. Okay, so here you see, I'll read it again. White people in this country have good jobs. You must have done something or you wouldn't be here. You would. You must have done something. You wouldn't be here if you weren't desperate. Mr. Conti, you're desperate. You're a white person who's desperate. That's the only reason you're here. You're here, you're desperate, and it's very likely that you're going to take the, the job because you're white. You're going to take the job from a black person. That That's the implication. And where and now we see where it comes from. From We have a mayor that has that same view. We have an appointee named Helen Diane Foster who is uh, also of the same view. Her, her father, she, she was a councilman, and her father was also a councilman in the Bronx. And it's good to represent your community, but he, here we see now that that it's um, it's it's becoming a problem. It is a problem because it's you know, stepping on justice. So let's look at who is, what is the latest view on Black Lives Matter? De Blasio said, I support Black Lives Matter. It's a, um, he said it's a, uh, 
it's a, uh, a, 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 a positive force in the world. Okay, okay. So here's the latest uh, comments from Black Lives Matter. They released a, a um, one of the uh, one of the, uh, the the leaders of this group out in St. Louis released ten requests from white people. So we'll end on this. The, here are the ten requests from white people across the country. Number one. White people, if you don't have any descendants, will your property to black or brown to a black or brown family, preferably one that lives in generational poverty. Nice. Number two, white people, if you're inherently if you inherited property you intend to sell upon acceptance, give it to a black or brown family. You're bound to make that money in some other white privileged way. Right? Number three. If you're a developer or a retail, uh, a, 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 rea a re realty, <laughs> let's start again, number three. If you're a developer or a realty owner of multifamily housing, build a sustainable complex in a black or brown uh, blighted neighborhood and let black and brown people live in it for free. Sounds reasonable. Number four, white people. There's a shout out to white people, number four. If you can afford to downsize, give up the home you own to a black or brown family, preferably a family from generational, generational poverty. Number five, white people, if any of the people you intend to leave your property to are racist assholes, change the will and will your property to a black or brown family, preferably a family with generational poverty. White people, re-budget your monthly so you can donate to black funds for land purchasing. Okay. Number seven, white people, especially white women, get a racist fired. Y'all know what the fuck they be saying. You are complicit when you ignore them. Get your boss fired because they racist too. Who's Black Lives Matter? It's not me. Number eight, Backing up number seven, this should be easy, but all those sheetless clan Nazis and other little dick, little dick white men will all be returning to work. Get their ass fired. Call the police even. Even if they look, even if they look suspicious. <sighs> number number nine. Okay, back to uh, backing up number eight. If any white person at your work or as you enter in, in spaces and you overhear a white person praising the actions from yesterday, this is in regards to a, a shooting, a police shooting. First, get a picture. Get their name and more info. Hell, find out where they work. Get them fired. But certainly address them. And if you need to, if you need to, you got hands. Use them. And number 10. Boom. Commit to two things. Fighting white supremacy where and how you can. This does not mean taking up knitting unless you're making scarves for black and brown kids in need and funding black and brown people and their work. All right, so that's some powerful stuff right there. I, I, know, I know I'm going on a little bit about this, but these are the um, demands from Black Lives Matter and... Uh, Okay, so, so uh, and, you know, de Blasio supports it, has not denounced it. Could you imagine if a white person came out and said uh, these sorts of things, that we should just throw black people under the bus because they represent a uh, dilution of some sort, that whatever these white supremacist people say about black people. But could you imagine if, if, if the politicians, you know, and the, the commissioner of the Division of Human Rights was in line with, with this type of rhetoric. Could you imagine the outrage then? But no, because, you know, it's, 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 it's this, it's not, see, the, 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 part, the Division of Human Rights is not, is not doing its job in terms of weeding out discrimination. What it's doing is it's, it's, a, it's a leg of affirmative action. Right? It's actually affirmative action where it's trying to, it's trying to, to, to use its, its psyche to place blacks in, in, in positions of power so that it could somehow, you know, it could, it, it could balance out the balance of races within the United States in terms of power. This is a, this is a, a fail theory. Okay? It's a fail theory. 
because the problems have always been economic in this problem. And unless you address the economic problems first, you'll never address the problem of racism. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it wasn't too winded. And uh, have a happy Columbus Day. Thank you.